Welcome to the webinar today on jailbreaking your retirement to invest in real estate and other alternative assets with me, your host, Brett Soninsky of Sense Financial. I am a uh, consultant here and uh, just as a, uh, a notice, we are not a fiduciary. We do not provide legal tax or investment accounting or other professional advice. If you need such advice, please seek out that competent professional. Thank you very much. Our mission here at Sense Financial is to help clients obtain control of and protect their retirement accounts. Proverbs 21.5 says, good planning and hard work lead to prosperity. And yes, indeed they do. Um, I come to you today with some experience as a real estate agent. I've had my license for a little over 10 years. Um, I have personally been a buy and hold real estate investor since the mid 2000s or so. And so I have experience on, on both sides of the equation. And um, my passion lies in really, truly helping people understand all the options that they have when it comes to how to save for retirement um, outside of just your traditional Wall Street investing, which please don't misunderstand me as I go through this. If you do that consistently, you can get very wealthy. Uh, I just think that you can get wealthier quicker using some alternative asset investing, especially when it comes to real estate. And we'll talk through that as we go. And so without further ado, let's jump in. Why should you listen to us? Well, as a company, we've been around since Financial has since 2010. In fact, Dmitry Fomachenko, the founder of Sense Financial, uh, started doing self-directed IRAs for a real estate investment club that he was working for. It's actually how I met him in the uh, in the 2000s. And prior to Sense Financial, they said, hey, we have all these clients. They came to Dimitri and said, we have all these clients who want to invest in real estate. And They've tapped out of their personal funds, but they have all these 401ks and IRAs and, and such. We've heard about these self-directed IRAs. Can you help establish these so that they can invest in real estate using their IRA? And he said, sure. And he jumped in and started uh, forming self-directed IRAs for this club that he was working for and really fell in love with, with the whole thing, discovered the solo 401k, subsequently uh, went out on his own, started Sense Financial, as I said, in 2010, and started doing the solo 401k and the self-directed IRA. And we'll talk about both of those. Uh, so we've been around a long time. We're way past the uh, startup phase and we have thousands of clients. Most of our business actually comes by referral. Uh, most of those referrals come from our existing clients. Uh, we also have five-star reviews on all the major review websites like Google and Trustpilot, uh, Bigger Pockets, and so you can you can Google search us just Sense Financial LLC reviews, and you'll see all those websites that come up. So we encourage you to do your due diligence before you uh, do business with any but any business. Um, we're going to talk today about uh, the difference between conventional versus self-directed, and then I'm going to go into how the IRA LLC works and how the solo 401k works and the benefits of each and when you would consider doing one or the other. But to kick it off, a little diagram. On the left, you have the bus that has to stay on the track. This bus picks you up at a certain spot, drops you off at a certain spot. You have to walk to and from that pick up and drop off, and you have to be there at certain times. And it's relegated to the track that has been laid out for it. That's your conventional side of investing, right? That's your Wall Street. That's your 401k through your current employer, your W-2 employer situation. Um, and you may have a Roth option. You may not. Uh, you may have uh, more control than others. But at the end of the day, it's all in Wall Street. Okay, that's your conventional. Think your Vanguard, Fidelity, T. Rowe Price, all your major custodians, right? That's your conventional investing. Now, on the other side, you have the off-road vehicle that can go where the bus can go, but it can also go off-road. It can actually go over sidewalks if you have to. It can go through streams, through some water. It can go over some rocks and, you know, maybe some small logs and such. It has four-wheel drive, so it can get unstuck from stuck situations and um, essentially uh, breaking out of the norm, right? It can go on the highways and the byways and everywhere in between. 
that's your self-directed side. It very much is like the wild, wild west, which makes it super exciting because you can take your money and you can do just about whatever you want with it when it comes to what asset class you can invest in. And so inside of a qualified retirement account, right? A tax advantaged account. And we'll talk more about that. So we're here to talk about self-directed retirement. And that provides virtually unlimited options, as I just alluded to. Some of the more common ones are real estate, both residential and commercial, private lending, tax deeds. Uh, you can become the bank. You can lend to people, clients who are lending to uh, fix and flippers, and they're getting 14 points plus, 14% uh, plus a couple points. I mean, a very lucrative way to invest your money. Of course, people are doing precious metals in cryptocurrency. And uh, these are just some of the more uh, common options that people choose. A quick example, Brad and Jennifer out of Phoenix, Arizona, real estate family. They have their real estate license. That's their business. Brad had some uh, retirement accounts that he wanted to consolidate and he wanted to actually, he found out that he could invest in alternative assets, non-Wall Street assets. So he wanted to um, not, not necessarily take all his money out of Wall Street, but he wanted to diversify. And he's a real estate guy. He's been selling real estate for a long time. And so several years ago, we established a solo 401k for Brad and for his wife, and they're both participating in it. And they actually uh, rolled over some existing funds and started making contributions to the solo 401k from their sponsoring business. Again, his goal was diversification. The result, he now has millions of dollars in real estate and he focused primarily on his Roth solo 401k. So all the profit, all the equity that he will realize that his retirement account will realize when he sells these properties inside of his Roth, none of that is going to be taxed. And so he's been, he's in uh, single family and multifamily. And um, the result is just amazing what he's been able to do. He's, they're going to have a great retirement. In fact, they're already over 59 and a half. So they're, uh, they can take distributions without any taxes or penalty, especially in the Roth. And the other part of the Roth, before I forget, is that it has no RMD requirement. So the Roth is the way to go. If you are young, I don't care if you're old or young or in the middle start putting money in a Roth. Okay. That's a whole nother conversation, but I, I'm just a big fan. So what are your options? Well, you have two mainstream options, right? You have the self-directed IRA and the solo 401k and you're thinking mainstream. I've never even heard of the solo 401k. Maybe that's you. That's okay. When I say mainstream, I mean the two most commonly self-directed retirement accounts are the self-directed IRA and the solo 401k. As you can see, the IRA on the left there, there's a lot of people, right? Diverse people, right? They're uh, all different walks of life. And that's because anybody can open an IRA, right? You just have to have some earned income or roll you roll over uh, a retirement account into a new IRA, right? That's a qualified retirement account. That's a transfer from one account to another. It's a non-taxable event, no penalties for doing that. And then on the other side, you have the solo 401k, which you can see just a couple there, uh, hence the word solo. Um, it's for you primarily and your spouse, right? Bible says you and your wife shall become one flesh. So you and your wife are one in the eyes of the IRS when it comes to the solo 401k. So you are able to both participate in that, but it does have a self-employment requirement attached to it. Okay. It's for that solopreneur. Uh, and more into that in a second. But first, how does the checkbook IRA work? Okay, so you'll hear checkbook IRA, you'll hear IRA LLC, self-directed IRA. Um, they're not all the same. IRA LLC and checkbook IRA are pretty much the same thing. Uh, and I'll show you why in a second. But um, before I do that, there is such a thing as a custodial IRA. So what does that mean? That means that I have to go through the custodian for all transactions. Okay. I have to, um, I have to go through the custodian for, uh, deposits, for, um, acquisitions of real estate. It can be kind of laborious. Okay. Now, now where the checkbook IRA comes in is that you actually get to avoid all that. Here's how it works. A new, IR, a new account is opened with an IRS-approved custodian, okay? And 
with that new account, you're actually able to, the account is opened, then you're able to set up what's called a qualified transfer. Now this transfer can come from any qualified retirement account, an IRA, a 401k, a 403b. And with that, with that uh, transfer in, that's actually a tax neutral event, okay? If it's a Roth IRA, it can become a Roth self-directed IRA. If it's a traditional IRA, it's a traditional self-directed IRA. If it's traditional funds from a 401k, same thing. Roth 401k, same thing. Roth self-directed IRA. Okay, so the, the custodial account is opened up. Now, this isn't a regular custodian like Vanguard, Fidelity, T. Rowe Price. This is a custodian that allows for non-Wall Street investing. Okay, non-Wall Street assets. Now, here's where the checkbook control comes in. This is how we bypass the custodian when it comes to transactions daily, weekly, uh, et cetera. One of the other benefits to this is that all the assets in the investments and in the accounts and everything are in the LLC. Okay. So what that means is when you make an offer on a rental property, for example, on a, on a piece of real estate, the LLC is actually what goes on that offer. With a custodial account, it's the name of the custodian for benefit of FBO, in other words, your self-directed IRA, right? So all assets are in the custodian. With checkbook control, they're all in the LLC. Now you're the manager of the LLC. The owner of the LLC is the self-directed IRA. That's what gives you checkbook control. That's what allows you to actually bypass the custodian. Now don't misunderstand me. You still have to have a custodian per IRS law and IRS guidelines, but you bypass them. The custodian is gonna come into play in a few different ways. Any transfers in, any Roth conversions, any RMDs, um, the annual valuation, because you're still responsible for providing the value of the plan on the fit for the 5498 to get uh, sent to the IRS and a copy to you, of course. So you tell the custodian what the total value of the plan is. This doesn't have to be scientific. It's, you know, if you have a piece of real estate in there in your cash, uh, a rough and tough value of the real estate plus the cash is the value that you provide them. You don't have to go and pay for an appraisal every year or anything like that. Um, but I digress. Once the LLC is set up, the bank account is actually funded either usually by a rollover, right? You can put contributions in and we'll talk about the difference between the solo 401k and the IRA. But for the IRA, the contribution annually is 7,000 if you're under 50 and 8,000 if you're over 50. So 99.9% .9 of our clients who do an IRA, a self-directed IRA, are actually rolling over existing retirement funds into that, right? Because at 7,000 a year, it's hard to build up enough to invest in alternative assets. There are some crowdfunding options and such that you can get in for, for a low amount of money and invest in real estate. Um, but by and large, most people are uh, wanting to roll in, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 and up thousands of dollars to uh, invest in non-Wall Street assets. Once this is all set up, you're ready to start making investments. All the money must go into, all the income and all the expenses must go into and out of that checking account, right? You have a checking account. I probably didn't say that, but this checking account is just, it's a, think about a regular checking account. You have a checkbook, you have a debit card, you have online bill pay. Okay, that's that's how you make the investment. So when you find a an investment you want to make, fill out the proper paperwork and do a wire transfer for the investment. And then you'll you'll of course provide them with the wiring information for you so that they can wire the returns back to you. Or if it's a rent check, you're going to say, "Hey, send a rent check here." And that's that's how it gets back into the checking account which is uh, the home, if you will, for the money until it's deployed into an investment. Okay, so that's how the checkbook IRA works. Now, what is a solo 401k? I already said this at the beginning, but it does have a self-employment requirement attached to it. Now, unlike the, unlike the IRA, the solo 401k allows you to contribute literally over, if you're over 50, uh, but 10 times the amount of what an IRA 
allows you to contribute. And we'll, we'll break these down in a, in a minute here. And, and by the way, as I'm getting through this, if anybody on this call, there are quite a few of you, if, if anybody has any questions, please type them into the, the Q and A there. I will give time after this for questions to be answered. Okay. I promise. Um, so the solo 401k has the self-employment requirement attached to it. Whatever that adopting business is, it could be you driving for Uber. It could be, um, you know, your real estate business license, your real estate license. Maybe you fix and flip, flip homes. Maybe you're doing hard money lending, loan origination over and over again. Any type of uh, actively earned business income. It doesn't matter if you're a sole proprietor, if you're a, uh, a C-Corp, an S-Corp, a partnership. All of these can sponsor a solo 401k plan. Okay. Now, whatever that adopting business is, that's where the contributions come from, right? Now, in addition to not only having a $69,000 annual contribution limit if you're under 50, $76,500 if you're over 50, you can also, just like the IRA, you can also roll over or transfer in direct rollover any other qualified retirement accounts to add to the plan. Now, the, there is one exception to that. The IRS currently, this may change in the future, but currently a Roth IRA is not allowed to go into a 401k. It has to stay an IRA. The other exceptions are like an inherited IRA. If it's a non-spousal inherited IRA, those have to stay an IRA. They stay an inherited IRA. Okay. So those can't be going, those can't go into uh, the 401k. A Roth 401k can go into the solo 401k. It's 401k to 401k the you can do a Roth conversion in the 401k we'll talk about that in a second but first a diagram of how the solo 401k works as i already mentioned you have a plan sponsor the adopting business of the plan okay now think about if you work at w2 job many people on this call are probably w2 employees somewhere uh, you may be participating in that employer sponsored uh, 401k plan that's a group 401k plan. All right. Now it's the same thing with this. It's just a solo 401k. So you still have that sponsor, the adopting business. It's not Walmart where you work. It's your own business. It's the same idea. Now, once you've identified, okay, I qualify for a solo 401k. The process is to adopt the plan. A trust is created. The, tr the solo 401k is a trust. Okay, you're the trustee of this trust. I'll talk more about that in a second. So an adoption agreement is created. And then as the trustee, unlike with the IRA LLC, where you're the manager of the LLC, with the solo 401k, you're the trustee of the trust, which holds all the assets, all the accounts, everything is open in the name of the trust, the solo 401k trust. So after the plan and the adoption agreement is created, the trust is created, you're the trustee. Through that control, through that trustee power, you have the ability to open a checking account, any other brokerage account that you'd like to. Because with the solo 401k, you can actually invest in non-Wall Street assets. But if you have $20,000 or $10,000 or whatever it is sitting in this checking account, you may not want it there not working for you. If you hold real, you got to keep something in there, right? Especially if you're holding rental real estate, you need some cushion to pay for bills and such. But if you are not doing that, or even if you are, you only need a certain amount. So what a lot of our clients do is they'll open a brokerage account at Vanguard or Fidelity or wherever and invest in like the S&P 500 or maybe even something more conservative, okay? We're not here to give financial advice about what to invest in. It's just an option so that it's not sitting in this checking account earning 0.06% interest, but it's rather earning a little bit more, right? And so that brokerage account is in the name of the 401k. It's not in your name, it's in the name of the solo 401k. So it's a non-prototype account at these brokerages, which means they don't do any tax reporting for you. It's it's uh, it's still in the 401k plan. It's just being invested through one of these brokerages. So that's that's how that works. But you will also open a checking account. We will assist with this. Okay. Now the checking account is the home, just like the IRA LLC is the home for the funds until they're deployed into whatever asset class that you are looking to get into. As such. All the investments, all the income, all the expenses and everything must go into and out of that checking account. And so that's how the 401k works. I already talked about this a little bit, but 
the contributions again ira 7000 under 50 8000 over 50 annually maybe that'll change in 2025 not sure yet and then for the 401k $76,500 per year per participant that means if you have a husband and wife everything i'm talking about doubles in the solo 401k okay also in the ira but with the ira it's two separate IRAs, right? Individual retirement account is what IRA stands for. So they're two separate plans. With the solo 401k, if you and your wife are in business together, you can actually participate under the same plan. You have your separate accounts, but you're under the same plan. Okay. So one set of plan documents, one establishment fee, one annual fee. It's great. Now, so all these numbers are doubled for a husband and wife. Uh, over uh, 76,500 per year partic per participant if you're over 50 and then 69,000 if you're under 50. Now you are wearing two different hats. So as the self-employed, you have the employee hat and you have the employer hat. You're doing both. You're working in the business, but you're also working on the business as the employer. You're providing the opportunity. Because of that, the IRS says, all right, we'll let you contribute to the solo 401k plan as an employee and also as an employer. And so as an employee, you can contribute up to $23,000 or $30,500 because of the catch up if you're over 50. This is called the elective deferral. Uh, this is the same contribution limit that you have at your W-2 employer, which you cannot double dip on. So the, the maximum is 23,000 if you're under 50 per person, not per plan. Okay, so if you're contributing 10,000 at your W-2 job, you can do another 13,000 at the uh, solo 401k. You cannot double dip on those, all right? Or if you're over 50, 30,500 is your max. Now, the way you get to 76 or 69 is because you also have profit sharing. The profit sharing is roughly 20% of your um, income for the year for the business. So it's actually based on net income if you're a sole proprietor, 20% uh, if you're S Corp and you're running payroll, it's 25% of the total payroll for the year, the gross payroll is what you can contribute on top of the elective deferral, okay? Now, if you're maxing out your W-2 job, we have a lot of clients who are, but they make a lot of money. We have a lot of software developers who uh, actually are software developing consultants, they call themselves. And I may not have that term correct, but they're some kind of consultant, right? So they're doing, they're moonlighting on the side and they also have their W-2. So they're very well paid in their W-2. They're maxing out those elective deferrals. Now, they may even get a prof, a match of some sort. That's okay. But they're making, you know, 100,000, 200,000, whatever in their side hustle, their self-employment, which is this consulting business they have. They can go, so they can't contribute anything on the elective deferral but they can go all the way up to 76.5 or 69 on just the profit sharing, okay? So that means if they're making simple math, if they're $100,000 gross payroll as an S Corp, they're gonna be able to put in $25,000 as a profit sharing contribution to the solo 401k on top of what they put in at their W-2 job, okay? That's how that works, 25% or 20% if you're a sole proprietor. The wise man saves for the future, but the foolish man spends whatever he gets. Proverbs 21, 20. All right. So you can actually get paid to get started. Sort of. The IRS will give you a $1,500 tax credit. This is part of Secure Act 2.0. And it's spread out over three years, 500 each year for the next three years. So that covers all the costs of your solo 401k, the, maintenance, the, the establishment fee and the maintenance for almost five years, by the way. So, but you'll get it in the first three. So just ask us about that and we can add it to your plan. It's important to note that if you go to like Vanguard and say, hey, I want to do a solo 401k, they can do a solo 401k, but it's very basic. So you'll have the same contribution limits, but you will be stuck in what they offer, right? Wall Street, basically stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs. You won't have the alternative assets. And furthermore, they cannot do things like modify the plan. They're very cookie cutter, we can modify the plan to include things like this um, this uh, $1,500 tax credit from the IRS. The other thing is uh, the participant loan option is not available with, uh, you know, like a brokerage like that. 
um, but it is available with our company. So it's up to $50,000 or 50% of the total plan value, whichever is less, you can actually borrow from your 401k and use it for virtually any reason. And I'll tell you, I'll give a couple examples here in a moment. Uh, we talked about the checkbook control, probably not going to belabor that anymore, but uh, just know that um, with the checkbook control, you actually have that control, right? You are able to make payments, write checks, wire transfers. By the way, the bank that will recommend for the 401k offers 25 free wire transfers every month. So that's usually sufficient to cover all your needs. And uh, those can add up. They're 25, 30 bucks each um, at other banks. Okay, let's talk about leverage. So this actually goes for both the uh, IRA and the and the solo 401k. You can use leverage to buy real estate. Um, no one will ever give you, well, I shouldn't say ever, but when is the last time somebody offered to give you a loan to buy more s p 500 right it just doesn't happen but with real estate you can get a loan you can get you can put down 30 40 50 percent down and get a loan for the rest and double or more your investment right more appreciation more rental income coming in your uh your 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 numbers can go your appreciation excuse me your roi can go through the roof uh, when you add leverage into it now because it's a retirement account and you are a disqualified party, which we'll talk about more, to the retirement account. You cannot personally guarantee the loan, which means it must be non-recourse. Okay, a non-recourse loan um, is essentially a loan where the property is the only security. So if if the if the borrower defaults on the loan, the only thing that the lender can come after is the property. Okay, you can't personally guarantee it. Your credit, your income, none of that is a factor in this which means the property needs to cash flow and you have to have a certain amount of cash reserves. We do have a list of non-recourse lenders on our website that you can check out. In fact, even on the website underneath the name of the lender, it says some of their terms that they offer, but we recommend you call them to get the most updated information. Um, now it's important to note that this will leverage on real estate will trigger UDFI unrelated debt finance income tax for an IRA. A solo 401k is a, exempt from that tax. I don't have time to get into all the ins and outs of how that works, but just know that um, this tax is factored after depreciation and after uh, subtracting the first thousand dollars. And so uh, generally speaking, it takes a lot to scale up to the maximum of 37%, which this UDFI tax uh has and it's only on the leveraged portion of the income okay it's not on the whole rent payment every month times 12 months it's on just the percentage of the income that represents the percentage of the property that has a loan okay so if you guys have questions about that we can address them at the end but i'm going to leave that there for now uh by the way one more note on you you udfi actually triggers ubit ubit tax unrelated business income tax now Solo 401k is not exempt from UBIT tax. It's only exempt from UBIT tax on leveraged real estate. So the other way that the UBIT tax can kick in is if the IRS determines that you're running an active business inside of your retirement account. Okay, so that might be flipping a lot of homes over and over and over again, right? That's an active business. Um, you're gonna get hit with this UDFI. Uh, well, actually it's not UDFI in that situation. It's just goes straight to UBIT. UDFI is unrelated debt finance income, so it only represents debt on real estate. But um, anyway, I'm done with that. If you guys have more questions, we can address them. Disallowed investments. It's real easy. Collectibles and life insurance. Otherwise, the sky's the limit. Now, there's one more thing, and that's disqualified parties, which can create prohibited transactions. So you, your spouse, your children, their spouses, your parents, and your grandparents, okay? the lineal descents are disqualified from uh, doing several things, personally benefiting from anything that the retirement account owns, which means you can't go stay at a rental property that the retirement account owns, the people that I mentioned. You can't get paid for managing a property, for services. You actually can't provide services. You can do, it's kind of a, uh, here's the best way to explain it. You can do the 
white collar work, but you can't do the blue collar work. So pretty much anything I can do behind a computer is okay. What I can't do is I can't go swing the hammer. I can hire the person that swings the hammer. If I'm rehabbing a property that I'm going to hold as a rental that I bought using my 401k, I should say that my 401k bought, uh, I can walk through the property and make sure that the, you know, everything's happening on schedule. I can go to Home Depot and pick out the, you know, the tile that I want to use in the, in the kitchen, whatever. Right. But I just can't do any of the blue collar work. Okay. So you can't personally guarantee the loans. You can't co-mingle any sort of properties or investments. Uh, a lot of times we have people who come to us and they're under contract on a rental property and they find out, oh man, I can do this in my retirement account. Well, they're like 15 days into a 30 day contract and they've already paid for the home inspection and they've already, you know, everything is in their personal name or even an LLC that they own personally, whatever, uh, all disqualified to the 401k because they're the owner of the LLC. But they come to us and they say, Hey, I'm 15 days in. Can I switch this to the 401k or the IRA? Well, the short answer is yes, you can, but you have to start completely over the, 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 the home inspection fee, the appraisal, if you paid for one, all of that would have to be uh, reimbursed to you personally, and you'd have to pay for it from the 401k. You can't, you can't pay for anything. You're a disqualified party. So uh, it's almost too late at that point, but not quite. We've been able to you know, do it. And the 401k setup is about four days. So it's pretty quick. The IRA takes three to four weeks. So it's a little harder to do that in that example I mentioned with the IRA, but the 401k is absolutely possible. Best bet is to have it ready to go before you start to acquire investments. All right. So a quick snapshot of the differences between the self-directed IRA, which is that custodial IRA that I mentioned at the beginning versus the LLC IRA versus the uh, solo 401k. And I did say that I would talk further about the uh, personal loan or participant loan, which I will. Um, the I want to talk about the built-in Roth first. So the 401k has a Roth component to it, as well as traditional. And those, those contributions up to $76,500 can be made as traditional pre-tax contributions, and they can also be made as Roth contributions or a combination. Work with your tax advisor to determine which one makes the most sense for you. I'm going to say long-term, the Roth will beat out that question every time. In the short term, you might need to pay less taxes. So a pre-tax contribution might make the most sense for you. It's a question to determine with you and your loved ones and also your tax advisor uh, to determine which one is best. I think the ultimate question is, well, A, can I afford to take the tax hit today? B, once I get past that, uh, do I wanna pay taxes on the seed or the harvest? And I, I mean, the answer is obvious, right? But that's the question you're asking. Uh, IRA is either traditional or it's Roth. It's not both. Okay. So solo 401k wins out again because it has both of those built in. The no UBIT on leveraged real estate we talked about. Okay. The personal loan. So again, up to $50,000 or 50% of the total plan value for the solo 401k is what you can borrow. That is paid back over five years, either monthly or quarterly at an interest rate of prime plus 1%. And you and your spouse can both take advantage of this. There's no limit to the amount of loans you can do. You just can't have more than one out at a time. So you pay the first one off, go to another loan. Uh, I mentioned this already, but you can use it for any purpose. That means that something that would otherwise be a prohibited transaction, you could use this for. If you use it to buy a primary residence, you can actually amortize the uh, payments over 15 years instead of five. You can use it to put money down on a fix and flip property that you want to buy personally, right? Not in the 401k. Okay. So that, that's how the participant loan works. Um, we've had a lot of people come to us with, a, with some high interest debt, revolving debt, like credit card debt, car debt, that sort of thing. And they um, want to get rid of it. And so we had one, one young lady, she's a nurse. She was uh, actually a traveling nurse as well. And she was doing some contract work in addition to a W-2 job. So she qualified for a solo 401k. She actually was uh, talking to her tax advisor and the tax, she had $10,000 of uh, credit card debt she wanted to get rid of. 
the tax advisor said, you better take out $20,000 because that's what you're probably going to need for taxes and penalties to pay off 10. Well, we established a solo 401k for her. She rolled over $20,000 and she only had to take out, she only had to take out 10, you know, 50%, right? She, she borrowed 50%. She paid off the credit card debt and she paid herself back. Rather, she paid her retirement account back, but she's the beneficiary of it. So that's where that participant loan could come in. Uh, we do have a free ebook I recommend you take advantage of and um, just go to that website on the bottom, sensefinancial.com forward slash IRA makeover, and you can check it out. It, it says IRA makeover, but it covers the 401k and the IRA. And then uh, lastly, I just want to make this offer for a, um, a phone consultation, uh, totally free. If you would like to jump on a call with me, we are going to talk about your situation. Uh, it'll be private and um, just help answer any questions you have and guide you in the right direction towards financial freedom. That is the ultimate goal. And for now, we'll take any questions that you have. Thank you very much. Hold on one second for me. Okay. I'm looking over at my other monitor if it looks like I'm doing this. Um, Adolf asks, can the LLC have both IRA and Roth, 401k and traditional IRA? Okay, I think I answered that question in there. And just a recap, yes, you can have an IRA LLC that is traditional or Roth, but not both. Um, and then the 401k, uh, actually, technically, you could have one LLC for both the Roth and the traditional, but that is definitely not recommended because everything that's done in that LLC has to be done together. Uh, all the investments, all the income, everything has to be done together. Any sort of uh, required minimum distributions have to be done at the same time. So it's 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 better to do separate IRA LLCs. Um, with the 401k, of course, it has a traditional and Roth. Can you roll over a SEP IRA to a solo 401k? Yes, you can. And just a quick note on the SEP, self-employment pension or self-employed pension, if you don't know what that is, it's it's it has the same contribution limit as the solo 401k, but you get there a lot slower because it only has the profit sharing. It does not have the elective deferral. That's the big difference between the SEP. It also doesn't have the participant loan option. And um, yeah, there's that's those are the major differences. Yeah, no, great, Stephen. Thanks for that. You can absolutely, uh, you know, an S-Corp can, can sponsor a 401k. Uh, just your, your contributions for the elective deferral are going to be made through payroll. And then your profit sharing is going to be based on the total gross payroll, your total W-2 for the whole year. So you can actually do the profit sharing contributions all the way up until you file, including extension. And so you're not going to, you're not going to, typically you're not going to calculate your profit sharing contribution until the year is over because you don't know, even if you're a sole proprietor, you don't know what your total uh, net profit or what your total payroll is for the year until the year is over. So it's, it's kind of important to wait so you don't over contribute. I uh, hope I'm saying this name correctly. Jagdish is asking, actually, let me do this. Uh, Jagdish is asking, I tried, sorry, bear with me here. I tried creating a brokerage account in the name of the single member LLC owned by Checkbook IRA, but after looking at the operating agreement. This has happened more than once when the platform realizes that the account owner is an IRA account. Oh, you're trying to provider. Oh yeah, uh, that's right. Uh, Vanguard, Fidelity, those those brokerages will not allow an IRA owned LLC to uh, open a brokerage account. That's correct. Tasty Trade is the only one I know of. That's Tasty, like Tasty Ice Cream Trade, like T R A D E, Tasty Trade. Uh, you could check them out. Typic typically, if you're going to have an IRA invested in Wall Street, um, it's probably the easiest to just either roll it from the IRA LLC back into the IRA at Vanguard and invest or Fidelity or wherever and invest in Wall Street instead of keeping it in the IRA LLC because that's perfectly fine. It's a tax neutral event um, or just don't roll that money into the IRA LLC anyway, if that's what you want to do to begin with rather. Um, so yeah, hopefully that answers that question. 
again, with the solo 401k, it's no problem opening one of the brokerage accounts. Can you invest in real estate in other countries? Yes, you can, but you're going to want to, Heidi, you're going to want to uh, connect with uh, a legal professional on the other side of the ocean, wherever that country is, uh, or in that other country, I guess it doesn't have to be across an ocean, um, but you're going to want to connect with a professional there and a professional here that understands both of those. So a little tricky, you're going to have to do some homework, but, um, and, and just remember, you know, whenever people ask me this, I get the feeling that they want to eventually use it personally and you can, but not until it's distributed to yourself, not a partial distribution. You can't go stay in one room if half the property is distributed to you. You have to, the whole thing has to be distributed to you because when it comes to distributions, RMDs and such, you can distribute assets as well as cash. Uh, a little more tricky to do it that way, but you can absolutely do that. Uh, when can you take out distributions, Roth, uh, Teresa? Oh, same, 59 and a half. It's the same thing. Now there is a five-year rule if you, uh, don't have any Roth IRAs, but if you just start one, it has to be there five years before you can take out distributions. Um, but you can withdraw the uh, principal, the contributions anytime because you've already paid taxes on those. So those can be taken out anytime without any sort of penalty or taxes or anything. So that's how the Roth accounts work on that. And um, I'll give it just another second here to see if anyone has any last minute questions. But uh, that was the last one that's pre-submitted. Appreciate all of you being here. And uh, just a friendly reminder, as we get towards the end of the year, it is November 7th. Um, it is important that you consider this sooner rather than later, especially the solo 401k, if you wanna take advantage of uh, sheltering some of the 2024 taxes, uh, income from taxes rather, or even make Roth contributions, but any sort of contributions, um, it's best to establish the plan in in this year if you want to make contributions for this year so oh i have one more question here okay i'm sorry i missed that question uh this is also from heidi do you have high interest bearing savings accounts you recommend that can be used to hold some of the cash uh no i don't uh, but again with the solo 401k you can open an account an account anywhere and, and trade so um, you should be able to find some kind of account that you can do that with pretty easily. All right. Well, I appreciate everybody coming on. Thank you so much. And uh, again, please reach out. Uh, go ahead and schedule a call with uh, my team. If you don't see something on here, um, just contact us directly at either that phone number, 949-228-9394, or contact at sensefinancial.com if you don't see a time and day that works on the calendar. And then for the calendar, sensefinancial.com forward slash free dash consultation. And with that said, uh, I'm going to wrap this thing up. Thank you all very much for being here and uh, Godspeed as you move forward. Thank you.